we've produced a 30 meter um, global product of forest uh, loss and gain on a backdrop of tree cover density. Uh, so the, the basic product looks like this, and it is a percent tree cover layer from 2000, and then on top of that, uh, forest cover loss and gain. We have trees as gr green uh, scale colors, so tr density is saturated, that's by 100% tree cover. You go down the Chaco, you see darker shades of green, that's a 50% tree cover, so this is a percent tree cover layer for 2000. Probably the most intensively used forest landscape is found in the southeast United States. And in this product, you can see all of the reds, blues, and magentas are indicative of forest disturbance or recovery. And uh, you see some really intense, uh, intense land uses. Out of uh, this echo, echo zone in the southeast U.S., 30% of forest land either was regrown or lost during this period, which is 12 years. It's incredible. So really, um, trees are as crops here. I mean, you might want to rethink a definition of forest because it's really, it's a different thing. This is not really natural. So this is a, so in the picture here, we have tr greens mean the forest didn't change in the last 12 years. So you can see there's something to do with the water, uh, watershed protection around a reservoir here. Everywhere else, um, um, the, gr the greens are stable and the blacks are non-forest. And then the dynamic is the red being loss, the blue being gain, and then these magentas being both during the 12 year period. Brazil in the last decade has cut their deforestation rate in half. Despite that decrease in Brazil's deforestation rate, the tropics as a whole have a statistically significant increase. And that is due to increasing rates of loss in Malaysia, Indonesia, Angola, Peru, Paraguay. All the other countries in our study are making up for the loss in Brazil. There's three things that changed in the recent past that allowed us to do a global scale Landsat, which is 30 meter uh, characterization of, of land, the land surface. Uh, first is the last Landsat sensor, ETM Plus on Landsat 7 satellite, um, had a global acquisition strategy. So we had observations everywhere. But it had a cost model associated with it, so you had to buy data. And we always said that uh, we, we would use the data uh, we could afford, not what we really needed and you were stuck. You couldn't do large area, large depth time series uh, with Landsat. So what happened uh, in 2008, they opened up the archive for free access. And you, there was really, you know, we didn't even have to ask what we needed. We had it, we could use it all. And so we start thinking, let's try and mine the archive systematically. If we did this project on one CPU, it would have taken 15 years. But if we do it in the cloud, it's a matter of days. So that's, that's the three things, the global acquisition strategy, free data, and cloud computing equals the ability to do this. And what we like about it, if we're working at 30 meters globally, our, our history has been to work at global scale. And you get a globally consistent product and you can say what's happening, you know, in the earth in its entirety. But with 30 meter, we can cut out any particular place and it should be locally relevant. So we have a glo globally consistent and locally relevant product. Thank <laughs> you.